Better Call Saul is a prequel to Breaking Bad, examining the backstories of several side characters from the original show. The most prominent of these characters are Jimmy McGill, who would go on to become the lawyer Saul Goodman, and Mike Ehrmantraut, the chief enforcer of Gus's meth empire. These two serve as the main characters of Better Call Saul, and their stories of how they became the men that they are in Breaking Bad are intertwined together. However, their relationship in Better Call Saul is much different than the one we see in Breaking Bad. In the prequel, Mike and Jimmy are somewhat close. Despite some initial animosity between the two, we see them work together multiple times in the series, even in life or death situations. You would think that such moments would bond the two together, but in Breaking Bad, their relationship is not nearly as pleasant. Despite continuing to do private detective work for Saul, Mike doesn't seem to care for him at all. He threatened to break Jimmy's legs and even kill him, all for Gus whom Mike seems much more loyal to. And the same goes for Jimmy, who doesn't want anything to do with Mike after their confrontation and doesn't even seem upset after Walter kills him. So how did they end up here? Were they friends whose relationship fell apart over the years? Or were they never friends, and it's we the audience who projected that relationship onto them? Let's find out. You're my very own P.I. threatening to break my legs! That's like Thomas Magnum threatening that, that little prissy guy with the mustache! Like I said before, Better Call Saul introduces us to these two characters and their lives before Breaking Bad. Jimmy McGill is a struggling lawyer trying to balance being an honest person with his natural desire to bend the rules. Working as a public defender at the courthouse, he runs into Mike Ehrmantraut, who's working at the gate collecting parking stickers. It's revealed that Mike is a former corrupt cop from Philadelphia. After other dirty cops kill his son, Matt, he murders them in revenge and moves to Albuquerque to get away, as well as take care of his daughter-in-law and granddaughter. Though initially trying to go straight as well, he ends up taking odd crime jobs in order to support his family. Though initially hostile, Mike ends up helping Jimmy out with advice when the Kettlemans disappear. Jimmy later helps Mike steal the notebook of the detectives investigating the murders of those cops. Mike then returns this favor by stealing the Kettlemans' money to force them to accept the plea deal. They continue to work together on several other projects. Mike hires Jimmy to represent Price when he's in danger with the cops, and also has him represent him when he amends his statements to the cops about Tuco Salamanca. Jimmy also helps Mike investigate Los Poyos Hermanos, though he doesn't end up with any useful information. Later, Mike poses as a repairman in order to take pictures of Chuck's house for Jimmy's upcoming hearing. After Chuck's death, Mike declines Jimmy's job to steal a Hummel figure, but instead offers his condolences for his brother's death. I'm sorry about your brother. However, the critical moment for their partnership is in the season 5 episode Bagman. When Jimmy is ambushed in the desert with Lalo's money, Mike ends up saving him by taking out all but one of the gangsters. However, this leaves them stranded. Together, they make their way through the desert, and they even manage to take out the final gangster by working together. This moment in particular seemed very significant for their relationship. In life or death situations, people tend to bond, and you would think that a situation like this would cement their friendship, with Jimmy owing his life to Mike. However, Jimmy doesn't seem to care about Mike at all that much, even after this situation. Like I said before, in Breaking Bad, he's scared of Mike after he threatens to break his legs. And he doesn't seem to care at all that Walt murdered the man who had saved his life before. Police, you know, where, uh, where Mike went to. Off on a trip to uh, Belize. Now, you could argue that it's because he realizes that he's just a pawn of Mike's much larger game with Gus. Even though Mike saves Jimmy and Bagman, he's really only doing it for Gus. After all, it's in his interest to get Lalo free so that he could later kill him in his home in Mexico. Mike is playing with Jimmy and Kim's life, and he may resent him because of that. I can't believe there's like over a billion people on this planet. The only person I have to talk about this to is you. However, 
However, Mike does go above and beyond with Jimmy, being prepared to kill Lalo to save him, despite this not being Gus's plan. We could just chalk this up to Mike's personal code of honor, or his hatred of the Salamanca family, but he does seem to have some genuine concern for Jimmy's well-being. Later, after Howard is killed, Mike cleans up the mess and advises Jimmy and Kim on how to move past the ordeal. Again, this is part of his job as a fixer to make sure that nothing about Lalo gets out. But his advice does seem to come from the heart, and is based upon his own past experiences and mistakes. You and your husband just go on living your lives. So if Mike did have some level of concern for Jimmy, perhaps the issue in their relationship comes from Jimmy himself instead. One of the themes of Better Call Saul is Jimmy deciding to cut himself off emotionally. We see him struggle with the conflicting emotions of being tempted to do bad things, but then feeling intense guilt over the result. His brother Chuck advises him to stop caring. Since he isn't going to change his behavior, there's no reason to continue to torture himself with guilt. This is why he's able to deliver such a powerful performance at the bar review without really meaning any of it. Oh uh, yeah, did to. you see those suckers? That one asshole was crying, he had actual tears, Jesus! This might be what Jimmy did to his relationship with Mike. Despite Mike saving his life, Jimmy at that point only cared about himself and Kim, and cut off any emotional attachment he might have felt for Mike. It's part of the overall moral decline that he goes through in order to become Saul Goodman. This might be why he also disregarded Mike's advice about Walter. In a flashback, we see that Mike advises Jimmy not to get involved with Walt's meth business because the man is dangerous. Jimmy disregarded this warning, seeing Walt as an opportunity to make money regardless of the consequences of his actions. And it's this, along with his selfish nature, that probably made Mike stop caring about Jimmy as well. After all, we know that straight shooter Mike hates people like Walt who constantly lie to themselves and others. Well, Jimmy displays these exact same traits, and after Kim left him and he fully embraced the Saul Goodman persona, Mike probably grew disgusted with him. He would still do small jobs with Saul to earn money for his family, but by the time of Breaking Bad, Mike has fully given his loyalty to Gus, whom he views as much more honorable than the selfish Walt or Saul. Why me? Because I believe that you understand. Understand what? Revenge. We should also consider that the story of Better Call Saul is also the story of Mike's decline as well. Just like Jimmy, Mike decides to cut off some of his morality in order to do what he has to do for his family. In the beginning, he refused to kill even someone like Tuco for money. But over the course of the show, he's forced to let go of this morality in order to become an enforcer for Gus and to protect his family. By the time of Breaking Bad, even the Honorable Mike is willing to hurt someone that he used to care about in order to protect his interests with Gus. Don't make me beat you till your legs don't work. Both Jimmy and Mike are flawed men. They had a relationship in the past, but because of the choices they made, they both became hardened criminals, and any concern that they had for each other died as they embraced their worst aspects. The road we're on led us out to the desert and everything that happened there and straight back to where we are right now. Now, that's a nice theory and all to explain the relationship between Mike and Jimmy over the course of the two shows. But we also have to acknowledge the reality of storytelling. Mike was not originally part of the series. He was written to be a one episode character because Bob Odenkirk wasn't available to film the scenes with Jane's overdose. So instead Mike was created, and he was so popular that they kept him around and even made him one of the leads of Better Call Saul. However, when he's first introduced, he doesn't have any connection to Gus, instead being the private investigator for Saul. Later, the series would establish that he's Gus's right-hand man, which sort of makes his relationship with Saul confusing. Like, why is this high-level enforcer continuing to do small, odd jobs for Saul when he has real work with Gus? 
Even Walt gets confused about who Mike really works for. The problem is the boss wouldn't like it. It's all my boss. Your boss. I bring all of this up to say that the relationship between Mike and Saul wasn't something the writers had planned out from the beginning. They wrote what they needed to for each episode, and then used that as a jumping off point for future storylines like Better Call Saul. But because of this, some aspects of their relationship don't make perfect sense in hindsight. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Makes more sense than you two being together. I'm still trying to figure out how that happened. However, I will give credit to the show for making their relationship as consistent as it was. It would have been easy to just forget some of these details. And I'm sure there was a temptation to make the two leads of the show close friends and work together constantly. But the show kept them appropriately separate for most of the series. And their characterization works perfectly for the themes that the story is trying to tell. And whether they were friends or not, they were both fantastic characters who made Better Call Saul what it is. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and stay tuned for more content coming soon. Jimmy and Mike might not have been friends, but me and my patrons definitely are. Matt Joyce, Uncle Mike, Sam Cedarland, Celery Man, Countess Von Zarevich, and Admiral. 